Here we go, here we go. It's Mr. Young. And it's fired in the building. Yo. <laughs> How we doing, everybody? Let me say hello to Chad. Fast game. It's good to see you. Edison, what's up? Bunnies can fly, indeed. And we will get to indeed, all that good bro. stuff uh, in just Jump a little while. Uh, so, what I, did you just I, I say? I got bad bunnies. I got Bad Bunny's theme song in my head, bro. His right. Puerto Rico theme song. Oh, I love that song, bro. Oh, my uh, God. Uh, what was the theme they keep saying? Live Boricua. Holy hell. I want to go to Puerto Rico now, bro. Yeah, la, all the chance, bro. I think it's better than a football game, bro. Na, 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 Boricua. <laughs> na, 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 Trica. You know, oh, oh, my gosh. Okay. And uh, I guess maybe the theme of this podcast today might as well just be foreign events. Because, hey, hey bro, it's all about you, bro. Hey, today. It's all about foreign it's a foreign affair, bro. Let's I go. I know. Let's right. go. But, oh my gosh, I think we have hit that era of, yes, you know, um, these brands are going to go ultra global and maybe, just maybe one day, bro, pay-per-view, premium live event, Singapore, can we cross our fingers? Can we pray to the wrestling gods? If UFC can do a show in Singapore, I don't think, I don't see why not, right? We but, will take anything, bro. We will take bragging rights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, house shows are fine, but come on, man. Give us the glitz and glamour of a full-on pay-per-view, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, even a smaller pay-per-view. Uh, but yeah. be that as it may, how the heck are you? How have you been since last week, bro? We need no, to catch I'm, up, I'm, you know? Yeah, yeah, we've got to catch up. I mean, uh, you know, it's nice to be back. You know, we took a, a little of a break right after mm. WrestleMania. But I feel like the gears are turning, man. Yes, I think yes. we need to get back in the groove because there's a lot of wrestling content coming out, both local and WWE, AEW, bro. Absolutely, and I can't wait to get down to all that good stuff. Like, I mean, uh, Grapple Max got that uh, Settle Outside show coming out really soon. Love we, the name. We, we love this name, right? Uh, SPW yes. has an event coming up soon as well. I believe Ring of Rebirth got plans too. So, yeah, man, lots of wrestling to get down to. So, we can't wait. Can't wait. Yeah, yeah for sure. And also, I think the great thing is when you take breaks here and there, right? You know, mm. we, we are trying not to like book ourselves into a corner in terms of oh, what do we talk about on this week's podcast? Yeah. Huh? When there's nothing to talk about, right? But I think when we talk, when there is things to talk about, I feel... Mm. The, the, the interest level is there. We, there is a demand. So we, we create a new demand and supply, bro, Mr. Young. Ah. Well, here's the thing. I believe that there's always something to talk about. It's just that we need a break from it also. La. You know, it's good for us to stay away from the product for a while. If <laughs> just like, you know, we always talk about, if you see something too often, it gets very boring, it gets bland, it becomes very ununique. I think that can happen mm-hmm. to anybody. That's why, like, you watch even TV shows. It's such uh, an incredible thing for a TV show to last more than, like, five seasons, six seasons, seven, eight seasons. Like, it's a miracle that The Simpsons have lasted this long, right? And what more the WWE as well. Yeah, and I think the, the selling point of WWE, the fact that it's a live show, right? Mm-hmm. So anything can happen and nothing stays the same. So yep. you always have that constant state of flux. If you're going to tell me you're going to watch, like, Friends, right? Friends wow. needs to exist in a vacuum. Correct. You can't do Friends all the way until now in their old age. They will just, it will just be weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Edison says, SummerSlam in the Singapore Sports Hub up to 80k with standing. Let's go! Hey, speaking of uh, Sports Hub area, this weekend, uh, if you are mm-hmm. you have nothing to do there, don't go. It's going to be packed and crowded, right? At the National oh. Stadium area. Because Blackpink oh. is going to be in town. Oh, uh, so Blackpink in your area. That's right. right. It, and your boy got tickets, so your boy's Ooh. gonna be at the national stadium. I'm gonna be cramped in there with everybody. It's gonna be great. We got the oh, cheapest tickets yeah. though, so I might need to bring binoculars. Bro, you're living life, bro. Living the life. I mean, say hi to Lisa for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, bro. I will shout from my nosebleeds. La Lisa, foreign says hi. Bro, funny story, bro. Remember uh, a few years ago, I went to Japan. I had a trip to Japan to yep. check out some pro wrestling over there. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, that, the, do you remember the story of how the show, I remember, was it a DDT show? I think it's a DDT show. It was in Kuroken Hall. Right. Which is right side by side to Tokyo Dome, which is like Sports Hub and Singapore Indoor Stadium, right? Correct. At the same night that DDT show was happening, outside it was a Blackpink concert bro, in Tokyo Dome. Are you serious? Yes. I, I, remember, I think I told you this story. So, right, as I was wading my way trying to find like uh. this Kuroken Hall, Everywhere was like jet girls, jet teenagers, <laughs> all walking around for oh. Blackpink. So I'm like, I'm in the wrong crowd, bro. Wait, bro, what <laughs> year was this? I'm trying to remember now. 2018. This was, 
2019. 19, 2019. Okay. I mean, it, you're still yeah, talking about like, you know, Blackpink sort of emerging as this huge breakout group, right? Mm-hmm. Now, now is a different story. Now they're at like peak status. Now they're like John Cena at his best. Well, bigger than John Cena, but you get my point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So it's, it's I mean, I can only imagine how crazy the crowd is going to be. Uh, mm. How are the tickets, even the cheap tickets, was it okay? <laughs> the cheap tickets is like 150, 160. Was it even? I can't remember. But yeah, I remember like the best tickets were like 500 plus. I was like, holy shit, bro. That's oh, a lot of cash man. to see Blackpink in your area. Man, they better, they better bring it, bro. They better just bring it. This Saturday, ah, yeah. bro. They always do, lah. Huh? They always put on a show. Did you see the clips of them at Coachella? All of a sudden, by the way, this is kicked to the K- K-pop, is it? What's going on? <laughs> no, no, no. We are going on a long sojourn, but because we are waiting for more people to come in. But, but, <laughs> I, I would say, I would argue, will the Singapore crowd be able to beat the Puerto Rico crowd in anything, bro? After wow. watching, wow, uh, You know, I, I love my fellow Singaporeans. I do, but I will have to say, nah. I don't think so, bro. I don't think so. Okay, okay. Talking about foreign crowds, we'll get to Puerto Rico in just a bit, but I very quickly also, and I put it in the ticker at the bottom, right? I want to talk about AEW. Let's not yes. talk about the TV uh, product right now because nothing has changed. It's still the same old, same old, right? Tony Khan will mm-hmm. never change. Young Bucks will okay. never change, blah, blah, blah. That, that stuff is just going on, right? But mm-hmm. let's talk about... All in. Their big Wembley event. And uh, Tony Khan made the big announcement. What was it? 60,000 tickets have been sold already. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Um, it's so funny, right? Because we, when you watch the product week in and week out, yeah. you're like, how the hell are they going to sell 1,000 well, tickets, let alone 60,000? <laughs> Here's the crazy <laughs> thing. Not a single match has been announced yet. Which goes to show, right? Um, a, the brand... At least the brand name is still there. You know what I mean? There's some yep. uh, clout to the brand name. But also, also, hello, Sir Hus. Sir Hus is hey. my auditor just passed by my desk. I never closed YouTube so fast in my life. <laughs> Trying to sneak in <laughs> some kick to the gut while at work, bro. We appreciate the risk you take. Technically, we are all sneaking in time at work, bro. Hey. Let's, be, let's be honest here, bro. Hang on. Sir Hus, it's 12 o'clock. Noon time. Isn't this lunchtime? Basket, hey, they're working you too hard, bro. 12 o'clock should be lunchtime. Ask him to F off. Go oh, makan one corner, go to the kopitian, bring <laughs> kopi and listen to kick the car. Let's go. Hey, I, I got my tea. I'm ready to talk, okay? So, okay, uh, back to All In, London, Wembley Stadium. This is the first time AEW is going to be in the UK in a big way, right? That's correct. Um, I don't understand why people are surprised. Remember, like, when this first came out, I think a lot of people expected me, especially because, you know, I'm such an AEW hater, to be like, oh, they won't be able to sell out. But I was like... No, man, I'm pretty sure they will do very well. And even if they don't do well, Tony Khan won't let them not do well. He'll probably buy out and give out those tickets. I'm not saying they did it here. But what I am saying is that's a region that is so starved for AEW content that I'm not surprised at all. Are you surprised? No, bro. If you think about it, right, the, all the biggest YouTube reaction channels, mm. YouTube commentary on wrestling, where are they from? The Call the Holly. Yeah. Bleacher Report. Not Bleacher Report. Um, what do you call it? What culture? What, what culture? Right? Mm. What's fun known uh, with Adam Blampier or Simon Miller, right? Mm-hmm. Basically, the point is, right, they are so starved for wrestling content. They created YouTube channels. They, I, I would say they are the one that kind of um, were the trailblazers in the YouTube sphere on mm. uh, fan interaction of that nature. And don't, don't like all these... Um, you know, they have all these like one-man shows uh, inside the ropes and all these wrestlers from the US will come to the UK to just do sit-down shows and they get yeah. sold out regularly. Mm-hmm. So yeah, definitely. I think the, I think the content is staff for um, wrestling in any form. Doesn't matter yeah. WWE or AEW, bro. Even Impact. Didn't Impact wasn't like Impact super well in UK when they were in their pomp and circumstance? Yeah, exactly. So I mean, like I said, this is no surprise. Now the question is, if they do it a second time, can they sell it out, you know? And, and that is the measuring stick, right? But yeah, for now, of course, this is the big novelty. It's a big event. It's a happening, right? Uh, what was the last big thing that happened at Wembley? Like, was it, it was probably uh, a football match, right? Uh, I mean, Wembley regularly sells out during uh, FA Cup finals. It? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so cup finals, right? They always mm. talk about like, oh, we want to go to Wembley. We're going to mm. win, win a title in Wembley. So um, it's always big deal Yep. It's happening. And remember, we talked about a few weeks ago how Warner is celebrating their 100th anniversary, mm. and Wembley also celebrating their 75th anniversary. Oh, uh, 
So I believe right this is just a marketing tactic not just on AEW side but right. it's Wembley they're bringing in all these international shows to showcase their stadium. Mm. Warner wants to do a big event to celebrate their anniversary and they're going to get the uh, right. AEW involved. So I think it's just like a great um I would say like a as fit would have it like all the yeah. stars align for all these mm. three uh, entities, right? So the last time there was a big wrestling event in Wembley was SummerSlam 92. Wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes, like, yes. So, wow. so yeah, the folk over in the UK, especially for that stadium, have been starving for it. So I'm absolutely not surprised. Now, uh, yep. I think maybe it also bodes them well that the rumor is out there that it could be a CM Punk. Like, can you imagine if they already announced, oh, the main event will be John Moxley versus Brian Danielson, for example, right? It's not mm-hmm. CM Punk. Then I don't know if that's going to be as big of a main event as Uh, compared to the rumor of maybe CM Punk comes back. Do you think that plays a role? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And I think it's smart of them. They mm. they're testing their brand's uh strength, right? Yeah. Their brand power, whether they can sell out an arena based on the the strength of their name. Mm. And of course, uh again, you can't you can't underestimate the UK crowd. Remember right, bro, when WWE wasn't doing so well in back in the mid 90s like the new yeah. generation era. Yeah. Didn't they have a lot of pay-per-views overseas mm-hmm. to make up for the bad uh like you know sell out th- uh, stadiums in uh, in and arenas in the US- United States because United States can't even sell out because they are so fatigued from wrestling they right. had to find new audiences overseas. That's right. And uh, I think that okay, so moving away from the AEW uh, story, right? And is there anything else you wanted to add to the AEW thing by the way? No, no, no not not surprised, but again, they have a lot to do on their TV side to create a card worthy of that value. But, but then again, right, we've said this very often and I brought up the point where the best way now to watch AEW is to not watch the weekly shows and just watch the pay-per-view. They are really an indie outfit where when you just watch the big event, ah, it, you know, it, it's cool. They do all these crazy stunts, crazy dives mm. and shit like that. But if you go and watch in between every week and they're doing the same shit every week, it gets boring. It gets mundane, right? So mm-hmm. better to not watch the weekly show. So in this sense, sort of like, I'm sure they will like go all all in and all out. Yeah, and literally. Right. right, yeah. They'll probably have like, like Rishi says, a stadium stampede match, use football, uh, whack each other, all kinds of nonsense. Like, you know, they'll come out with bullshit, right? <laughs> yes, But, I agree. Uh, beyond that, like, you know, It's just going to be one big happening event and after that, that's it. Like, I don't know if the WWE are going to be worried or anything like that. Especially not after what happened this past weekend. Um, I'm I'm curious as well because, uh, you know, they were they could have done it at Craven Cottage, which, is, mm. which would be the equivalent of Tony Khan doing it in the Jacksonville Jaguar Stadium, right? They already yep. own their place. They don't have to worry so much about rent, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But I think Wembley was a risk. It was a calculated risk. They yeah. purposely wanted to, uh, you know, put themselves on a pedestal, try to mm. sell out something that they can't sell. My question is, they are coming into this with their worst television, like, in a long time, right? Yeah. Like, if you're talking about doing this, selling it out in 2021, when CM Punk just returned, mm. um, you know, and, and like, the hype, pe- everyone was loving AEW, people were coming in, signing up with from WWE like that would have been the perfect culmination to end it at Wembley so it's like okay yeah. give you the best example yeah imagine Maroon 5 right right now want to sell out like Super Bowl like 20, in 2023 like uh-huh. no one gives a damn I mean even in 2019 I, w- I would argue that they weren't even in the peak of their powers to headline a Super Bowl but then yeah. they still suck yeah. no, but- <laughs> if you do it now Yeah, Come on. but but like we're saying, they're doing it and it's working only because the people there have been starved for it. And that's probably why he didn't want to do it at Craven Cottage. He's like, okay, the first time has to be the big one because it only goes down from there. The second yes. time, it's not going to be as big. The second time might as well be at Craven Cottage, you know? That, that would make more sense, right? So the first one has to be the big one because he cannot go the other way already. Once you set that bar, it's, it only goes down. It cannot go up unless you have a hot product, which I don't know if he realizes he does not. Yeah, yeah, Ed, you're perfectly right in the sense that he's striking, not while the iron is hot, while there the, is still an iron to be struck. struck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's exactly it, right? And so at the end of the day, we'll go and watch because of the spectacle. But then 
moving on from there? Where do they go from there? Can they do big events after that? You know, this yeah. is very reminiscent of the very first all. Was it the first one? The all, the crowd funded pay per view. Was it all in or all out? I forget yeah, the name. Yeah, there was all in. So this is essentially the sequel to that first all yeah. in. So that yeah. all in was like basically a lot of people just putting their money down to support this brand, and you know they wanted the alternative to the WWE, right? Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But this time around. I think a lot of it has to do with the like, whoa, event. This is a big happening. We want to be at the big happening. So, um, um, we'll very interestingly, yeah. uh, Rishi mentioned AEW will benefit from the NJPW format. What do you, what do you think he means by that? Uh, I don't know because I don't watch New Japan. <laughs> because, because because I know New Japan is essentially they are not a television product. Like there's mm. no weekly New Japan show every mm. Monday on some Japanese channel, right? Yeah. They are essentially a touring company mm. and then they only have pay-per-views on their big shows. But the rest of the week, they, they go on excursions or they oh. do... Okay. Like, well, I mean, don't you think that AEW is kind of booked like New Japan but with TV shows in between so they okay, has fill it up with bullshit lah. Uh, yeah, essentially that's it lah because they can't do the WWE method of having like a long running storyline throughout. They are not capable of doing such a thing. Uh, okay, outside why, of like stars, like, why are they not capable of such When you say they are not capable, are you talking about they are, it's not capable because of the structure there or because they don't have the right people and they just don't know how to do it? I would argue they don't have a booker lah who knows how to structure long-term storylines lah. <laughs> ah, yeah, that is that is true. But okay, we'll see. Uh, did you hear about the whole Jungle Boy thing when he was in the UK doing uh, fan fairs, that kind of stuff? And apparently, I, he had a really bad attitude. I saw. I saw some of the footage. I saw it was on Twitter. Oh uh, wow! Yeah, yeah. Um, oh. man, bro, that fella is a young guy. Fella mm. doesn't know anything about the business. I would Ch- say he's a rich kid, who, you know. I wouldn't say he's like a man of the people. Right, no, he has a chip on his shoulder. But here's the thing, right? You're supposed to be out there and you're supposed to be the baby face of the company. And Mm -hmm. you're like, I don't know, man. Maybe they need to turn him heel. But then again, he isn't a good performer, period. So whether heel or face, it's still going to suck, right? Yeah, um, it's so funny, right? Like, I would argue Dominic Mysterio has way surpassed Jungle Boy in terms of not just ability but crowd reaction character for a lot of the Raws you see Dominic gets the loudest heel heats yeah (laughs) and some people are even not even comparing him to Jungle Boy they're comparing him to MJF for crying out loud he's like the biggest heel outside of Roman Reigns in WWE at some nights bro right and yeah and even now Roman Reigns gets cheers so you could argue that Dominic is the biggest heel in the entire company, which is kind of crazy, lah. But you know, yeah, yeah. Um, it is what it is. So okay. Uh, enough about the AEW. Hello, Jason. How are you? Let's talk about Yo. this past weekend in Puerto Rico. Oh, um, what can I say, man? It's one of those situations, and we talk about how a crowd makes a pay per view, right? Like it didn't matter how bad the pay per view was, and it trust me, it wasn't bad at all by any stretch. But this crowd would have made made it good, even if it was bad. The fact that yeah. it was good made it like 10 million times better. Do you remember 2005 New Year's Revolution when they had it in San Juan? The last time they were no. there. No. What, what, okay. what was the main event? That was where they had an elimination chamber. And this was like Batista's Rise. Huh. And uh, this, I think this was the road to WrestleMania 21. The, yeah, so it's 2005. Early 2005. Mm, mm, okay. So during this period, if you remember... Okay, I'm just going to like jog your memory... The, the World Heavyweight Championship was vacant mm-hmm. and uh, Randy Orton really left Evolution and they were like having a rivalry, right? Randy yeah. and Triple H. Yeah. But then in this match, Batista was also in this match. So Batista's job was to kind of help Triple H win. Mm-hmm. But there was this early seeds of distrust because yeah. uh, I think, I believe like Randy did like RKO on Batista and Triple H technically could have like, like stopped the count but like he chose he to like just... I just fall down the corner, yes, right? I remember yeah, this. Yeah, now you remember, right? Yep. Yes. So, funnily enough, Triple H referenced this during the press conference, uh, the backlash press conference in Puerto Rico. Okay. Yeah, very funny because he said like, oh, you know, 15 or 17 years ago, I was a champion walking into <laughs> the uh, back, backlash, uh, walking into... Uh, Puerto Rico, the, uh, San Juan. The, yeah, the last pay-per-view that WWE did in San Juan. And right now, I have the honor of 
telling you guys about the world heavyweight title, right? Uh-huh. So I, I just see a lot of there's so much history in San Juan from right. not just the WWE perspective, but if you know all the stories in the past, but they always talk mm. about how the crowd in Puerto Rico is like damn crazy and damn yeah. violent. They can incite riots if you're the heel. Rick Flair talk about it all the time. Yeah, they love the uh, street fight. They love a bit of blood, which well, we got to see a little bit of everything. Right. All right. Don't don't you feel like they remind you of a 1980s crowd? Uh yeah yeah um they they reminded me of an ECW crowd like in not that they are disgusting <laughs> ne'er do wells <laughs> no in that they are so passionate about the wrestlers and they were cheering and booing along the way for almost everybody you know and uh, some very surprising people they were cheering as well which we will get to in just a little while but yeah, yeah um the crowd to me was the mvp of the entire show like holy I, hell i agree i will use this analogy bro i think the crowd was a booker's dream bro yes yes you could literally based on that crowd turn anybody you want do anything you want and it would have worked because they would have reacted to it right yeah which, yeah, they, yeah. which brings me to my other point of is nick khan's sort of connections and his inner workings with Endeavor finally paying off. Like, this is the start of more of these world tours. Because if UFC is very good at anything, they've gone all around in Brazil, in Europe, in US, UK. They've held UFC events all over the world. So they will have the connections to perhaps do more now with the WWE, with this new product that they have. Very interesting you brought up that point, bro. Because I was just about to say that I've heard that this was Nick Khan's idea all along for WWE uh-huh. to expand internationally. Like yeah. that was one of his, uh, I would say, big uh, directives mm-hmm. when he became CEO. Yep. He wants WWE to be able to auction off their yeah. PLEs to cities. So like how in WrestleMania, their cities bid to have the ability to host. Yep. He wants to do it for even the P- B-level uh-huh. pay-per-views. C level, which is really, really smart, don't you think so? Oh, absolutely. Singapore Tourism Board, please, please do <laughs> one. Do one for us. Oh my God, yes, please, yes. No, no, but it's so smart because last time when we as fans, when we watched like a backlash or like mm. a freaking Clash of Champions, you're like, ah, yeah, this is a waste time, this is a C level, yeah. you know? And I felt that when they're doing it in the US, but imagine, right, they have all the pay per views, like the backlashes, the Judgment yeah. Day, or whatever it is, in international waters or international cities. Every single paper is going to be lit, bro. Yeah, bro. Remember when the Saudi mania was... You knew it was some nonsense. Some glorified mm-hmm. house show. And then year after year, the money starts pouring. It's like, okay, we better do this properly. And then all of a sudden, the Saudi mania shows become like legit WrestleMania, but in Saudi Arabia, you know? Yeah, and like, again, the crowd in Saudi Arabia are really invested. Yes. They love who they were. Didn't they make Logan Paul essentially a baby face in Saudi Arabia? <laughs> pretty, pretty much, pretty much, right? Um, yeah. the, the problem with coming to Singapore, and I know uh, for us fans, we would love that. Do you think we could sell out a PLE? I don't even think we sold out the house show in 2016 when they came down, when we were there. They, But the thing is, they keep, they've come down quite regularly. I think the last seven years, like they came like 2015, 2017, 2019. Yeah. There was quite a lot of WWE being here. But in, okay, if they want to sell out the Sports Hub, it needs to be like, a, it needs to be a pay-per-view. They need to get international exposure. And for some reason, Dante Chen needs to be a main roster member. Then yeah. I think it makes sense for them to come to Sports Hub. <laughs> so, okay, interesting stat that Jason brings up. Puerto Rican uh, Tourism Board, they paid the WWE 1.5 mil to come in. They're mm-hmm. not repeating it though, so it's a one-off. Like It's a tourism spend. So yeah, essentially what needs to happen is Singapore Tourism Board needs to go, okay, we, are, we see the worth, we are going to spend the money. That's all there is. That, yeah, that's all sure. there is to it. Because... The last few times that they've come down to WWE, right, for house shows, those are just like um, freaking, oh, by the way, we're going to be in Japan. We might as well swing by Singapore and make a bit of extra money. You know, that's it. Yep. Yep, yep. We weren't their main, like, no. attraction, right? In Absolutely Asian... not. Yeah. But, but if they were to somehow create that star, like I would say, like Dante Chen is the key to everything. If Dante Chen is a big enough star, like, you know how, remember, they did that show in uh, Melbourne, Australia. Yep. And then they gave Buddy Murphy the Cruiserweight title. Sure. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's nice to have that one match, but, you know, it, it's not going to be the main event. It's not going to be the linchpin that sells the entire event. Ultimately, it has to be a tourism board thing, you know, and it has to be... The, it's, it's a money. It's a money thing. You're buying the show. You're paying to bring the WWE, this traveling circus, in. And, Bro, you know... Uh, I would argue, right, any Asian wrestler, mm. any Australian wrestler is technically all our home... Home sure. wrestlers, you know? Sure. Like, well, I would say Rhea Ripley would be beloved in, w- in <laughs> Singapore. Come on. I, well, she's beloved everywhere. La. But yeah, your Iro Shirai's, your Shinsuke Nakamura could very feasibly headline, you know, one remember, of these events. Remember when Nakamura headlined against AJ Styles when, yeah. when we were there ringside? Yeah. How crazy the crowd went. And this was, both of them weren't doing nothing jack shit on television. But <laughs> question, like once again, going back to it, was it even a sellout? I don't think it was, you know. And so no, I wasn't. don't think I don't think there's a market for it. If anything, if anything, you should probably do it in Malaysia, Indo, one of these bigger countries with a bigger crowd. And then Singaporean fans will fly in, what? Yeah, that's true, that's true. But I would argue WWE is so much hotter now in 2023 than in 2019. Sure, sure. That, yep. that is a good point so, as well. So, I mean, it's a pipe dream. I'm sure they have bigger targets. I'm sure they want to go to Europe. I'm not sure they want to go to maybe other cities in uh, South Africa, whatever the case may be. There are just way more venues yeah. than tiny little dot in I, Singapore. I remember, bro, 2003, they did a SmackDown tour in Singapore. Do you remember there was this, like, uh, they filmed this for WWE. Eddie Guerrero, John Cena, all eating Chinese food in Chinatown. Do you remember oh, yeah. this? They they went to the medicinal shop or something. It's a bull penis or something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then uh, what Eddie Guerrero was saying, like, oh, you can you should put Tobasco on this. Like, anything can get. <laughs> anything yeah. I can eat because I'm Mexican, right? So, yeah. Mm. Um, so that aside, okay, let, let's get back to the backlash. And um, they kicked off. I was surprised they kicked off with this, but hearing the crowd, the crowd was very ready. They, they were like freaking EO Sky had the biggest pop I've heard she uh, heard her ever get ever in her life, in my life. Like, bro, holy to be fair, hell, bro. They brought back her old theme song, her yes. heel NXT theme song, which is like amazing, like her freaking Yakuza music. So, like, come on, yeah. who wouldn't um, pop for that? And they were kind of booing Bele. They were against Bele. So I'm very like curious as to what has happened here. Like why they, all of a sudden did this crowd turn on Bele a little bit and mm-hmm. were completely behind Eos Sky? Uh, I believe the Puerto Rican crowd is also kind of a smart crowd as well. Mm-hmm. Even though they love their baby faces, they cheer, but they also see who are the workhorses. Do you realize um, all the workhorse wrestlers, the one those underappreciated, but everyone knows that they are universally universally mm. good, Io Shirai, right? Mm. It, yeah, I, I think I think it's just them trying to give their flowers to all these underappreciated wrestlers. And I think they also get that whole, you know, okay, Bianca is on that Cena push, Roman Reigns push. Let's start booing her. You know, I think this might plant the seeds for the next couple of weeks. I don't know if you know uh, the next couple of weeks we will see the American crowd start to boo her. I kind of am hoping so because yeah, <laughs> they, they're they doing the whole like, what's it? How many day run already? Like, uh, has she mm. been champion for a year? She's trying to break some record lah. It's yeah. like kind of, yeah, you're bringing a record but nobody really is paying attention, right? Yeah, and also the problem is she is a Raw champion on SmackDown. So, mm. well, there Rhea, needs to be Rhea some a, addressing that. Rhea's a SmackDown champion on Raw so it's a lateral swap lah. Uh, I wish they don't do the belt swap thing, but I, that that's the only thing they probably can do. La. Yeah, there's no other way. And if they ever want to unify, it has to be, you know, at a major event. So, you know, your Survivor Series, SummerSlam, WrestleMania. So that's not, uh, not going to come anytime soon. Uh, the match itself. Okay, I mean, like, shit. This reminded me of an NXT match. Triple H, yeah, probably, right. Triple H probably just told them to like, all right, you guys go out there and do what you did in NXT. You didn't... And- you didn't have a good feud in NXT as well, both of them. Yes, yes. Th- that's why everyone's sort of been like, okay, why is Io Sky sort of jobbing around as Bailey's lackey? And, you know, it's not like she's getting the rub from Bailey. They've just kind of been, you know, been lackeys. And here, she kind of like stood out by herself. I'm hoping that this is sort of the lead in to her breaking away from damage control. Yeah, I mean, it's great that they, she came out by herself. Mm. Like, most of the match was just one-on-one. And, of course, Io, like, showed out, right? Her yeah. moonsault is amazing. Like, some of the awesome sequences they did. You know that both of them are pros. Yeah. 
Oh, damage control only came out at the end, and like yes. I mean, speaking of Bailey, everyone was talking about Bailey's got back, bro. Oh yes. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, but anyway, uh, I digress. But the, the point is, damage control came right at the end, and kind of Bailey kind of cost Io the win. Hmm. In a way, yes. But, yeah. So I, 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 I hope, I hope there's some issues there. Yeah, I mean, if you were watching this pay-per-view and you've only watched this pay-per-view in recent times, you would think that Io Sky was a big star. Yes. If you watch Raw or the past couple of months, you'd be like, Io who? <laughs> you know? Mm. <laughs> oh man, she's, yeah, she's so underutilized. I think she is uh, the best Japanese wrestler since Asuka, you know, to debut. Sure. They should really... And I would even argue that I think she has a much more... I would say intriguing personality than Asuka because she's kind of have this resting bitch face <laughs> and like you know what, what I mean yeah well okay I just hope that they don't make her do the you know typical foreign heel all they do is scream like weird like nah 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 she got the judgy eyes bro she got the she does the uh, weird like I don't know I to me that is a bit much like it's a bit too much you know like okay you're a bit being extra just 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 be normal I feel you know, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's their style there. But, mm-hmm. like, you know, the Japanese wrestlers, a lot of them like to do, like, oh, I'm from the Orient. Lots of movement. <laughs> like, it's a weird movement. I'm like, okay, can you just act normal, please? Oh, just, my God. All the oriental, uh, oriental vibes. Uh. I know. Like, what is that? Like, what really is that? You know? Like, I don't know, man. Like, I think, bro, they are crying. They are dying for a Japanese wrestler who can speak well, well spoken, yeah. can speak English, no accent. They are dying for Ken Watanabe, basically. Like. Who the heck is. Oh, Ken Watanabe. He got <laughs> accent, why? Ken Watanabe. You're talking about the actor, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay, who who would you say is a very well spoken Asian man? I, I would say Donnie Yen speaks really well. Sure, yeah, yeah. Just a yeah. slight accent, you mean, right? Would no, like, I think the accent gives them their charm. But it's just mm, that, yeah. like, Io and a lot of, like, even Asuka, they literally can form, like, one sentence and that's it. So that's a bit of an issue. Yeah. Right? Like, it's not right. like... They, they need an eloquent, someone yeah. who can speak really, really well and comfortable in English. <laughs> Dante Chen. Yeah, like, clearly. That's what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> yeah, we but literally I mean... are sitting on a, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but there's a lot more uh, development to be done there. Lah. So, uh, great match. Bianca Belair won, which was the obvious choice. Hopefully, we see EO Sky move away from damage control moving ahead. Lah. Uh, and then yep. we'll probably get, what, EO versus Dakota Kai, EO versus Bailey at some point then? I would dare say EO and Dakota will still stay together and they oust Bailey. You think so? Okay. Oh, Jason says Michin. But Michin is Michin. Lah. Michin. <laughs> see, here's the thing. The... Just because you're Asian and can speak, doesn't mean, you know, you still need to wrestle. You is it still she need like the X Factor? Huh? Is it she like black knees? Not really she's Asian. Asian bladdy. I don't know. Black, what was her, her phrase? The bladdy. The baddie. Hit, Bla- hit. Bla- blasian. Baddie, blasian. Black and Asian. Oh. Blasian. There you go. Blasian. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Mm. Head bitch in charge, right? Yeah. Or oh, head baddie in charge if you're going PG. Um, yeah, she doesn't really stand out, unfortunately. So, there you go. Uh, let's move on then. <laughs> the match nobody wanted but was surprisingly good. Seth Rollins <laughs> versus okay. Omas. This is this is all on Seth lah. Clearly, bro, come on. But, well, okay, on. so uh, you have this match. I don't know what for. Omas gets beat. Like, he's become that Braun Strowman, that big show. Like, after a while... Oh, he's so big, he's so tall, and then now he's just losing to Randos. Not Randos, like it's still Seth. But you know what I mean. Like I still have no idea why they feuded because like I wasn't watching a lot of the Ross and Smackdowns, but can anyone tell me feasibly what was their beef? Why did they start fighting? There was some sort of they rationalized it. They tried to reference some interaction they had in the previous months. Mm-hmm. But it was like, okay, la, nobody still nobody cares, huh? You know? <laughs> I think this was like Seth Rollins, like, maybe last, like, okay, like, fine, fine. You go, you go help give this guy a good match. Okay, then after this, we can give you the world title. This right. is probably what it is all about. Hey, I hope so. Because, man, he deserves it after pulling a decent match out of Omas. Yeah, no, legitimately, I sat through that entire match. Maybe yeah. it was, like, eight minutes, ten minutes. And I was like, oh, shit, like, Seth is in peril, man. Like, Omas is, like, doing... Yeah. Cool. Do, you, do you see Omas basically do an Undertaker tribute? The, uh, huh? When? He did, he did Snake Eyes. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, snake eyes into the big boot. And I was like, mm, okay, okay. For some reason, I actually thought 
Omar actually looks smooth in that match. So I don't know whether my eyes are deceiving me or not. Bro, bro, Seth is wrestling Jesus, so he made him look good. Okay. I, I he, he, do you know that that finisher that he did right, that storm from the top, wouldn't yeah. it destroy your knees? Because I was so scared for him when he jumped from that high. Right. Yeah. Because you're landing on one knee, lah. Basically. Yeah, you're landing on one knee, and he is kind of like taking it full force yeah. on one leg as well, like yeah, because, on the landing. So. Yeah, because he cannot put weight on the other leg because then he will really stomp poor Omas, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously he's not going to do that finisher all the time, but it made sense, right? Like, oh, I can't finish him off with my regular stomp. I better do a stomp off the top rope. Yeah, I, I thought that was a great way of like elevating the finisher and also making Omas look like a badass. A badass, know, yeah. Um, I like a lot of the booking, this entire... Um, pay-per-view. I would like to think that maybe Vince McMahon is like, ah, I don't want to go to Puerto Rico! And Triple H had free reign. And that's why all the booking made sense. It was good booking. Isn't it crazy when you just let the most logical outcome happen and don't yep. don't joke around the hometown crowd lah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much, right? Um, Funnily enough, okay, the third match, right? This one was a bit of a toilet break match for me. I don't know why. I like okay. I like you sat through Seth versus Omas. I was like, oh okay, this is interesting. Austin Theory, Bobby Lashley, Bronson Reed. <laughs> tell me, tell me what you think about this match. Um, okay, first of all, I get it. Why? Honestly, mm. if that Omas and Seth match was cold, I would say this triple threat match is even colder. But um, here's the thing: they have more of an interaction on Raw leading up to this. They yeah, had more interaction, yeah. But but Bobby and Austin Theory has like fought over the US title so many times in yeah. the last couple of months. So that one done really, that one bassy really, right? Yeah. Bronson Reed is the new like X Factor coming into the match. So mm. I watched it not for Bobby and Austin. I was I really wanted to see Bronson Reed because I haven't really had a chance to sit down and watch his matches. And I must say, bro, mm. like, doesn't he remind you of Bam Bam Bigelow a bit? Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, obviously the. Th- Visually, he does, but athletically as well. He's a very yeah. athletic big man, you know? Yeah, this fellow was doing freaking, like, moonsaults. Bro, his fucking tsunami was, like, amazing. Because the way he does and sets up his tsunami, right? When he goes on the top rope, right? Mm. He's basically launching himself from one one leg, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's even more impressive. I'm like, wow, this guy, uh, yeah. So, but again, he had to take the loss, lah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Like, he, he was there. Like, so you get, you keep Bobby strong, you keep Austin Theory strong, right? I mean, this was quite an obvious um, decision. Yeah. Like, they were not going to change the title. I would say it was a great TV match, but mm. again, does it make, will it make sense on a pay-per-view? I get why it was a toilet break, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, let's move on then to, well, I mean, one of the hometown heroes here. Holy shit. Like, Rhea Ripley versus Zelina Vega. And you know when Zelina Vega came out and then you used to see like the emotion on her face? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if she was acting or she really felt it, but I felt that she felt it. You know, if she was acting, she did a very good job acting. But holy hell, you could tell like this is the baby face, a hometown hero. She's so grateful and happy to be there going up against the monster heel champion. I I felt it was so genuine, that um, whole thing. Um, Even if like we couldn't, if you're someone who don't couldn't care less for Zelina Vega before this, yeah, yeah. I think just seeing her in the environment, uh, seeing her get her flowers from yeah. her hometown, technically she's not really from there, but you know, family's yeah. from there. Yeah. I still felt like, wow, anything is possible. Like I really thought it was gonna be a Ray Mysterio moment, even though like realistically we know Rhea is definitely not gonna drop the title. But just the way it was presented, we couldn't help but root for Zelina Vega. Is this the best she's looked in a long time as well? Like in terms of oh, yeah, like for, ring for shape. Sure. Mm. It, I mean, she, she she looks smoking all the time, but like something about her new presentation with the LWO, with yeah. Rey Mysterio as a mentor, right? Okay, to uh, be fair, let's talk about the LWO for a second. Um, mm-hmm. Other than Rey and maybe Zelina, like who else? I mean, Joaquin Wal and the, the other fellow, I don't even know his name. Um, no, 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 no. Change, change name, bro. Cruz del Toro. Yeah, and... Cruz del Toro, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> Santos Escobar is supposed to be, quote-unquote, uh, the leader of those two. But, like, you know, they kind of come off as lackeys as well. Like, they haven't... Okay, I don't know how they were presented in NXT. Maybe you might know better. But mm-hmm. I did. I don't... I've never seen Santos Escobar, like, really cut a proper promo. He, he doesn't have that... 
I would say Alberto Del Rio kind of charisma. So I don't know what is he all, what is he all about. But he does though. That's the thing. I think he's better than Alberto Del Rio. He speaks better, more fluent English than Alberto Del Rio. So okay, I, so he has he had I, a chance to just show that? Or that's what? the thing. I don't think so. And and he's uh. always on NXT. He was a heel, ma. So he was like this menacing bad guy, you know. So it, I wish. Well, you know, I guess because now you want to ride off the coattails of uh, quote unquote of Ray and Eddie as well. I mean, you know, they come out to Viva La Raza for crying out loud. That's Eddie's freaking theme song, right? Do, like, do you feel like it's a bit of butchering yes. his classic theme? Yes, I do. Because every time I hear it, I get excited. Then I read, oh, wait, no, it's LWO, it's Bluff One. Oh, <laughs> they're no. cheating my, it feels like they're cheating my feelings, you know what I mean? Uh, okay, okay, yeah, that's sad. So I don't know whether... when I had mixed feelings about the new theme song because I don't know whether it was paying homage or it was like, you're just leveraging off of another more popular you know, name. You know? It, it, it feels to me like a straight up rip-off. Like, how long I, did the LWO even last in WCW? Not that long. Less than a year, bro. Less than a yeah. year. I would argue, Legado's theme song is really so good. And don't they have like an awesome chant in yeah. NXT? Legado. No, like the tune. Dun, 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 dun. So everyone would chant, Legado. Legado. Okay, yeah, I, but... I didn't even know it was Legado's theme song until mm. I started playing WWE 2K23 and I had uh-huh. like the entrance music as part of the menu music. Right. Yeah, I was like, hey, what, what's this dope song? I really like this dope song. I couldn't put two and two together until I actually played yeah. as Santos Escobar. <laughs> but okay, here's, you know what it is, right? Legado yeah. del Fantasma is too chim for your average American audience. Must make it simple. L-W-O. Ah, I can't remember. Legado del... Ah, yeah, foreign language. I don't know, bro. I don't know what foreign language this is, <laughs> but I can, I can support the L-W-O. But Legado del Fantasma... What the f*** is that? You know, bro, I, your your solid <laughs> accent is amazing. Bro. <laughs> Aspect, bro. Come on, guys, guys, give us some support to Mister Yakov. This is amazing. <laughs> like, uh, but like anyway, um, so Zelina Zel- Zel- looked awesome. Rhea, holy hell, mommy, like mm. Rhea has gone from just like badass looks cool to like her entire presentation now you can see the confidence in her face. Also, mm. she's a natural. She is just. For everything she does, the way she looks at the camera, the way she looks at Zelina, like, whoo, she she might just be one of the best wrestlers in the WWE, not women wrestlers, the best, one of the best right now. I would say, I would argue, right, like that match with Charlotte mm. was that final, final stamp. form that, yeah. you know, she was lacking. Then once she beat Charlotte, she got that approval, that stamp of approval. We have really, now we are seeing the maturity of Rhea Ripley as, as an entertainer, like, as a sports entertainer and yeah, wrestler I, as well. I, I am so happy to be able to be here to watch peak Rhea as, you know, I think she is hitting her form right now. Um, this match was really well put out, I thought, because if this were, you know, if this were AEW, right, Zelina Vega would have beat the shit out of Rhea Ripley. But this, yeah. thank God, thank God, it was big, strong powerhouse versus quick and fast and smaller you know it's a, yeah, it's a, Young, uh, I see I see that you've been listening to Jim Cordette <laughs> <laughs> no but I, it's, I, it's a classic no, no, it's true, matchup I, I agree I agree I, uh, mo- most of the sound bites I was I was just before I came on the mm. podcast I was listening to him in the morning and, and he hit basically all the same points right mm. the fact that even though realistically Zelina against Rhea is supposed to be a mismatch. But I think they lean into it. They lean into the fact that it was a big girl, small girl match. Yeah. She was being resourceful. She he uh and and Rhea was kind of like uh underestimating her yeah. and the La Chancla, bro, the La Chancla, come on. What the slipper is it? Yes, the slipper. <laughs> oh, that was that was okay. La. I was I was sitting there when it happened, I was going, isn't that a disqualification? <laughs> isn't that a DQ, bro? Foreign object, bro. Uh, I, okay, I, maybe there's some rules on what is the weight needed. Uh, minimum <laughs> weight for it to be a foreign object. Oh, oh, okay. So if I bring in a wire and choke somebody, that one okay lah. Because that one technically light, right? Come on, bro. It's wrestling, bro. I don't even want to try to explain the logic <laughs> of it. Uh, 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 but, but, but yeah. But, yeah it's, 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 it's fun. Like, they play into hmm. what the crowd wanted, right? No, yes. And they gave the crowd a bit of hope. You can see Rhea Ripley just react to everything. She is having fun playing this heel role. It was perfect. It was perfect. Mm. I, I like I like what Jim Cornette said as well about how WWE is booking for the world, 
not mm. just for that hometown at that yes, point in time. Yes. So even though, yes, they gave all the shine to that hometown hero, but in terms of business sense, of course, Rhea really needs mm. a dominant run. Of course, she's not going to lose on the first time of asking, right? Yeah, and of course, you know, um, like, like you said, lah, it makes sense for the rest of the world, right? For Rhea Ripley to move on. And you see, the thing is, right now, they are thinking like a global company. They have the foresight. They have Nick Khan and all that kind of stuff. So, AEW is still booking like an independent company. Just I, I know, you know, uh, we didn't want to go back there, but you can see the difference right now, especially after WWE got sold, you know? Yeah. Um, I've never doubted WWE's ability to... They are the sports entertainment yeah. leaders for a reason, right? Mm-hmm. They are there to innovate. And even something as simple as booking for the hometown, but yeah. also thinking long-term for the rest of the world, that, that's that's what a global company needs to do. Yeah. So it and makes yet, sense. even though Ripley won, Zelina still got her moment. So they, they got the best of both worlds. The yeah. heel retain, everything maintain, status quo, you know. Uh, it is how it's supposed to be. But you gave Zelina Vega that highlight. And hopefully along the way, you elevated her as well, moving forward. <laughs> Yeah, if you uh, didn't pick the raw results, um, mm. I thought like Zelina might have something else to say about this, but uh, they've moved on. Real Ria oh. has a new challenger already. Oh. Uh, uh, oh. It's not what it's not it's not something that you would like, love. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I haven't I haven't watched Raw, so I have no idea. I've only seen Bro, some spoilers. Yes. Take a guess. Take a guess. Who is the most like deflating choice as the next opponent? Deflating ah. Wow. You like Alama? This girl again? Who? This girl again... Wow, eh. Hey, you see, until them bats, yeah. Okay, it, it's she, not uh, Sonia Deville or... No, it has to be a face, right? She, she's somebody that is like forever there. She just... No one cares about her, but she will just come and give a good match. Natalia. <laughs> okay, okay. This is side quest. <laughs> this is side quest. Clearly, clearly, for, clearly. Maybe they're having a show in Montreal or something. Oh, like, I mean, I for, for us gamers, we know this as a grind. Just so, okay, like, you do deal with the side quest, get some XP, then move on to the main storyline. This one is just side quest, okay? Like, oh god. No, no. I would rather Zelina have a rematch. Huh? Come on. Sure, actually, you know, yeah, just going off of this whole uh, Puerto Rico thing, right? But uh, just, just a really good match. I mean, I don't think it was as well wrestled as Bianca Io, but storyline and just being in the moment, selling the moment, brilliant. You see Zelina's best performance in WWE? I think so, yeah. I would I would say so. If anything, the moment elevated her, she lived up to the moment and everybody goes up. Do you think Zelina is like slotting into the Sasha Banks role? <laughs> a little bit. A little, what, with the blue <laughs> hair, is it? <laughs> The blue hair, the Latina heritage, paying homage to yeah. Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio. She basically took, her, took, took over the Latina demographic. La. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's move on then. And, well, a lot of people said maybe this should have been the main event. I disagree. As much uh, fun as this match was, as good mm-hmm. as this match was, mm-hmm. it's still, I mean, you can't have the non, like, non-quote-unquote wrestler-wrestlers be in the main yeah. event, right? Bad Bunny versus Damien Priest. And also Damien Priest, unfortunately, is not a main event star at this point. Not, not yet. I, I not would yet. say this is like a solid upper mid, upper main event. Yeah. Like, like a Vince McMahon versus Shane McMahon in WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of thing, right? But that yeah. Vince versus Shane is not going to headline WrestleMania. Like you got to leave it to your you know, big boys. So, okay. Bad Bunny, Damien Priest. Like, I mean, they did the best they could in terms of like, Technically, if you think about it, this wrestler should destroy and decimate this musician, right? Yep. But we've seen Bad Bunny before. We know that he got some skills. He's not some fly-by-night <laughs> celebrity. He's not David Arquette. Let's put it that way. Like, yep. Yep. He, he's shown that he can wrestle, right? And so, um, I think they did a good job. You know, Damien Priest, it's, he's a tale as old as time. Uh. The, the dominant heel gets cocky and then he makes a mistake and then suddenly he injured because he did that spinning kick to the post and then, oh, he broke his ankle, ah, ah, whatever shit. Lah. You know, he injured himself and that let the underdog um, get in the offense. Lah. Yeah, um, I love that they kind of measure each other up maybe Damien will overpower into some strength, right? Yeah, but for sure. Bad Bunny had a hometown crowd, right? He had a tough yeah. man behind him. Mm. He had his weapons. He had his new Jack impersonation, you know, with the shopping, the shopping cart. cart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, um, somebody made a great reference on social media. I can't remember who he was, but mm. he's, they said, like, he's basically, he got a Jeff Hardy guts, which, ah. which makes him 
very likable, right? Yeah. He's not coordinated at all. He's not Logan Paul in terms of athleticism. Yeah. But he got the Jeff Hardy there, devil. I don't give a damn. Just gonna throw my yeah. body into everything. Can I, I? Can we just appreciate how well they handled the the extra bullshit, the the garbage mm. stuff? They didn't overdo it. There weren't 10,000 tables. There wasn't a barbed wire bed. There wasn't a table wrapped in barbed wire just conveniently hiding under the uh, ring. You know, like, it was there, but it wasn't... Like, it were legitimate things you would fight in a street fight, I guess, huh? Yeah, I mean, within the context of what we are trying to suspend our disbelief for, yeah. it worked. It worked. Yeah. It's fine. Um, um, and so... I've- there was that big spot where he falcon, uh, priest falcon arrow bunny off a uh, platform onto the table, right? Yep. Um, like, I don't know lah. At that point, I was like, "Wow, he just killed him." But then, you know, it didn't finish the match, so yep. I was like, "Wow, this this bad bunny, huh? Can really take a lot, huh?" He's giving the Shane McMahon drop, bro. You know the Shane McMahon drop where he just. Can just def- for some reason like you can believably think that Shimmy Man can beat Kane. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> He's like right. that much of a crazy guy. Um, one thing I wanted to say was, I think they did a great job of like you said handling the surprise returns. Like, mm-hmm. did anyone like honest to God, bro? Did you think Kalito mm-hmm. was gonna show up in this pay per view? Bro, when his music played, I legitimately got like, eh, who the heck is that? What music is that? And why is it so familiar? It took me a good three, four seconds to realize, holy shit, it's Carlito. You know? And you it, pop yourself, bro. <laughs> I, I pop myself. I was like, ah! And then, of course, he comes out and he looks jacked. Bro, the funniest thing was like, he got a Stone Cold 1999 pop, bro. Do you yeah. see the crowd jumping off their feet? Yeah, they were like, oh, it's Carlito. I if mean, I didn't was... know, it was uh, Stone Cold Kalito coming with a freaking chair to save mankind, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was the perfect, like, moment. Perf- I mean, and the crowd, like, you have to give it up to the crowd. Like, some some US crowds are just the shits, right? They want to shit on everything or they're just quiet. This one, complete opposite. Anything yeah. also, they pop. Savio Vega, they pop. The- <laughs> Savio Vega and Kalito was the Stone Cold and Rock of this <laughs> pay-per-view. <laughs> <laughs> the pops for both of them was insane, bro. Oh, yes, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, like, yeah, he didn't hmm. do much. He just came and just clean house, spit some apple, crowd went home happy. Mm. Perfect. Well, well, you see, this is smart booking, right? You mm. first of all had the, the the judgment day come out to get the unfair advantage. Only yeah. because the bad guys are doing that, then you can have Rey Mysterio come out. But Rey is still, uh, they are still under man, man, two versus three, right? Then, okay, you can justify Kalito come out or everybody come out to even the odds. Then it becomes, all right, you know, the... The, the faces are not bullying the heels, quote-unquote. Yeah. I mean, okay, I don't know Savio Vega that well because I think I was too young to see his matches. <laughs> yeah. But what's up with his uh, freaking spike and slap to the face, bro? Like, is that his, like, trademark move or something? It was um, so funny. I can't remember. I do believe he used to do something like that. But here's the thing. Um, didn't he used to be Quang as well? Was he Quang? I think he was Quang. Shit, my wrestling knowledge doesn't go beyond be, before 1995. So I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like he used to be Quang, or maybe that was a reference to Quang. I, I remember somebody in my chat bringing up Quang. Mm, okay, very interesting. Oh uh, well, I, I he did a lot of spinning heel kicks. So was right. that a thing? Uh yes, I think so. Then again, it has been a long time since I watched a Savio Vega match. It's kind of crazy, right? Savio Vega was like good friends with the with The Undertaker, with Stone Cold. Like, isn't he a member of the BSK? Yeah, he was. He was. And he had a lot of... Um, for some reason, he had a lot of world title matches against uh, Stone Cold. Yeah. Uh, randomly fighting The Rock in for the IC title. So he was kind of there amongst yeah. all these, like, Attitude Era legends, but he, he himself wasn't as well thought of. I don't know why. No. Like, he was that weird... He was that... Like a D'Lo Brown, almost. He's You know, like, remember there was a period where D'Lo Brown was involved in a lot of like upper mid card feuds. But yeah. then after a while, he just kind of slid down. Yeah, and Sapio was part of, was he Los Boricuas? Ah, shit. I can't remember, Sia. Lo- I think so. Okay, yes. Yeah. Uh, who's confirms? Uh, he used to be Quang. Yeah, wait. Los Boricuas, who was in this faction other than Sapio Vega? <laughs> Bunch of why, other why, Latino fellas. Yeah, why the rest of the Los Boricuas weren't in Puerto Rico today? Or like, are they even still alive? I don't know. I think nobody, people, uh, nobody remembers them. Yeah, it's like people remember uh, what 
what the disciples of DOA disciples of apocalypse ah uh, yeah yeah like the oddities oh my god like my brain is like suddenly oh my transported god. back yeah. in time bro okay I'm gonna google it right now Los Bariquas yeah who um, is in Los Bariquas please okay uh, this he formed this group after he got kicked out of the nation of domination so it was damn funny I remember now that era you had the Latino gang you had the all African American gang you have <laughs> the white biker skinheads it's like wow lao it's uh, basically a prison lah. <laughs> yeah. Javi, uh, Savio Vega, Miguel Perez, Jose Estrada, and Jesus Castillo. I have no idea who any of these people are. Jose Estrada sounds like somebody who worked with Shawn Michaels before. I don't know. Yeah, you anyhow, bro. Why, why you just uh, anyhow throw? Oh, wait, wait. The one that trained Shawn Michaels in his IMA match was some old fuck, no, right? Wow, that one old, yeah. No, no, no. Um, that one was... um. You know which oh, I'm talking about, right? The Boyhood Dream. Uh, oh, 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 that's Jose uh, Latario. Latario, <laughs> yes. Oh uh, you just God. need you a see? few phrases to jog your memory. Uh. The Boyhood Dream, Shawn yeah. Michaels, and Jose Latario. No, 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 that's not him. That's That fella is way older than Los Padricos. Okay. Anyway, I don't know why we got into Los Padricos, but... No, I'm trying to think of like, in, in the future, they're going to do more shows in Puerto Rico, right? They can't keep bringing out Carlito and no, no. They need more Puerto Rico stars, right? This Puerto Rico <laughs> thing is a one-off, bro. 1.5 okay. mil they pay. For wow. WWE, so uh, I don't know if they have that in the budget every single year. Saudi Arabia does, so that's why Ooh. they get the Saudi mania all the time. Um, I hope so many people went to Puerto Rico after this, bro. After yeah, such a big show. So, so. so okay, you had Bad Bunny beating Damien Priest. Um, I guess because Bad Bunny like used the chair, whack him a few times, you know, and then had to do the Canadian Destroyer, which <sighs> honestly, I'm not a fan of the move anymore. Because it looks fake. You know what I mean? It's one of those moves that you pull out once in a while, I guess, okay. But, uh, and, and I guess you could argue that this is a once in a while move because ba- only Bad Bunny does it. It's cool if only P- P- P.T. Williams did it, like yeah. 2005, when no one else has done it. Yeah, then Adam Cole, uh, it's his Panama Sunrise, like, basically. And now Bad Bunny does it. It's, but I don't like it because it looks very obvious that the other guy is doing the work you know yeah yeah he's basically flipping himself backwards into yeah. on his head now yeah for you. i i am not a fan of moves where the person taking the move has to look like they're helping if it looks too much i would say don't do the move then what do you think of that slice bread that bad bunny did then slice slice bread was okay right i know but like the thing is right Oh, clearly, clearly it was uh, Damien that was helping him get on top to jump what? up the ropes. Wow. And he almost yeah. landed on his head because of it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, fine. Like, I mean, that you know what I mean? Like, on a regular basis, you could close one eye, you could argue, like, oh, he's sticking him and then he's going up and then, you know, he's doing a, a move on him, right? Mm-hmm. But with the Canadian Destroyer, physically, nobody can do that weird backflip thing. It's the other, like, the physics of it shows that that guy is helping you do it. Mm. Um, yeah, again, I'm not a fan of Canadian Destroyers. Um, I think it's overdone. I yep. think AEW spoiled it a lot for me. AEW uh, has spoiled a lot of moves, bro. Super Kick yeah. being one of them. Yeah. Uh, I argue Super Kick has been way overdone since the Usos took over. So yeah, sure. it is what it is. But one thing I wanted to say, though, was apparently this match was produced by uh, what's his what's his name? The guy that did the freaking slice bread. Oh, Brian Kendrick. Yeah, Brian Kendrick produced Wait, his match. He's back. He is. He is. He's as, as a backstage agent. Okay. Didn't get. Didn't he get into trouble for some really weird comments? I can't remember yeah. what those comments were. He was supposed to sign up, sign with AEW debut there. Yeah. yeah. But then he had like some. Uh, I think he was like anti, was na- anti- pro Nazi or some shit. Like uh, anti Semitic stuff lah. Yeah, yeah, probably that. Uh. But he's back, he's back, and he's apparently produced the match, and he apparently gave Bad Bunny the blessing to do his finisher, which is a sliced bread. Ah, which, you know, Bad mm. Bunny went and landed on his head. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah, la, so clearly, la, clearly ah. he didn't do pay homage as well as he could. La. Yeah, but like you said, you know, um, Bad Bunny is not the athletic sort of celebrity wrestler that Logan Paul is, but he's definitely beloved, and especially in Puerto Rico, holy shit, he might as well have been The Rock and Stone Cold combined, right? Um, yeah. Because that's, you know, that's his people. So can we just say that right now, in 2023, in actually in the past couple of years, their celebrity involvement has been peak 
top level like now they figured it it's almost as if okay they figured it out this is how we incorporate celebrities they also found a current yeah. celebrity like a relevant yeah. celebrity they, they found gems people who are not just um you know celebrities and fans of the sport but also people who are respectful of the sport who will train who will put on a good match as opposed to you know you had, david arquette was a fan but he's not a trained wrestler like mm-hmm. and nothing about what he did looked like he was trained same with dennis rodman same with uh carl malone the two basketball nba players right mm-hmm. And then you had like your Bam Bam, uh, no, not Bam Bam, uh, t- Lawrence Taylor who fought Bam Bam. Wow, lani. Yeah. And cannot, you know, cannot make it. Uh. Cannot, yeah. And then you have your celebrities who clearly have no idea what wrestling is about. They're just there to sort of like show face, promote a movie, those type of mm-hmm. celebrities. Uh, mm-hmm. You don't see any of that anymore. They really QC the celebrities now. So that's yeah. that's really, really good. Either that um, or they really go through with them, okay, this is what you need to do, this is what you don't do, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, the quality is much better. Somebody said uh, on Twitter that made me laugh. Uh, like, Bad Bunny fighting uh, Damien Priest or like a WWE wrestler is the equivalent of Shawn Michaels fighting Michael Jackson in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean... Like, really? Bad Bunny is technically on the level of Michael Jackson worldwide recognition now at this point. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if Bad Bunny can dance, but they even have like a similar build. Like, they're slightly skinnier, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, can you imagine? That's damn funny, though. That's damn funny. I, I had like the mental image of like <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson coming out to beat it and then like fighting show Michael. I don't know. It's so funny, he, bro. He, he gets kicked. Hee hee. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> As he jumps off the top row. Woo! <laughs> uh, frog splash on Shawn Michaels, bro. And then he moonwalk in the ring. Dun, 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 he was like, oh, Shawn, you want to fight me? Come on! Come on! Come <laughs> on! Okay. Okay. Now I want to create Michael Jackson in uh, WWE Kid 2K23 to get that going. Oh my so, god, uh, somebody please do that. Freaking have him do moon. You can just steal uh, what? PS Hayes uh, moonwalking oh, and then yeah. use the thorn in WWE. Oh okay, my god. Go. And then do the crotch shot because you know he does the thing like ah okay lah. So similar lah, huh? Um oh, Damien Priest losing to Bad Bunny. I know there was a lot of shenanigans, but this was the right result, yes, but it kind of makes look that makes Damien look a little bit bad, doesn't it? Like um, big, big tough guy. It's weird because I kind of feel like this actually benefited Damien, but not in the logical mm. sense like in the wrestling sense of course it sucks that he lost to a celebrity yeah. uh he's the bigger size guy he got outsmarted right yeah but this is the most mainstream exposure that damien will ever get sure yeah right so like yeah. i think him being associated with bad bunny clearly is because bad bunny trusts him or they trust each other to mm. push to a good match they have that uh, you know they have that affinity already and also damien priest can go back and say like, oh, you know, he cheated or he beat up my leg, he injured yeah. me, he has it out, right? Yeah. And then the next day on Raw today, he was already in the triple threat match, mm-hmm. uh, fight, fighting for the World Heavyweight Championship, call, uh, contend, uh, contending there over there. So mm. uh, he kind of recovered smoothly, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, Damien has become that utility guy, that guy that everyone knows, okay, you can trust him, put on a good match, even guide a, you know, a celebrity to a good match as well. I hope he, I hope that he doesn't get slotted into that role. You know, obviously we all want him to get pushed up, elevated to upper main event, uh, up uh, lower main event or main event. He has become a bit like Scott Hall to me. Like, you know, Scott Hall, mm. you always respected his work rate. Yeah, know he was talented, but yeah. for some reason never became Champ. the guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like never the A guy, right? He's always like the B guy. Is he a B plus player, bro? Mm, <laughs> I mean. Uh, There's also the fact that you have to keep track of his age as well, right? I think he just uh, turned 40. Still, give him one run, why not, right? Like, dude, yeah. that, like if Jinder Mahal, I, I don't mean to pick on him, but if Jinder Mahal <laughs> can have a run with the title, why not Damien Priest, bro? Bro, don't play, play. Jinder, don't hinder the Jinder. He's coming to Raw, bro. He did a segment on Raw today. <laughs> he did, really? With Hindu share, is it? Yeah, yeah, he brought, he bringing back his gang. So it's going to be uh. an Indian faction on Raw soon. Okay, fine. Oh, that means uh, maybe it's an Indian uh, PLE coming India P- PLE coming soon. Oh, bro. Can you imagine if they do a P- pay-per-view in India? Oh, it's going to be bro. crazy. Bro. Road trip, bro. Let's go. Mumbai. I'm ready. Ooh. I've never been to Mumbai or India, by the way. 
Have you been to India or you never been to India before? Nah, I've never been to India. Okay, I will definitely put that on my bucket list. If they actually come to India, yes. Ooh, it's let's be go. Uh, okay, let's move on then. Funnily enough, right? Uh, and I don't know if it's because this has been played out already, but the bloodline <laughs> versus Matt Riddle, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn felt a little... Okay, I think also because the crowd had hit a high with Bad Bunny. So this is, mm. the, come da- this is the in-between, the come-down toilet break match almost, which, oh, wow. I mean, if you think it's kind of crazy, it's the bloodline, right? One of the hottest... Actually, the hottest storyline before WrestleMania. Mm. Are you still invested in the Usos and the Owens and the Sami Zayn? And now, I guess they've included Matt Riddle. Because I will say this, when Matt Riddle came out, the crowd was flat. Yeah, I mean... Unfortunately, Matt Riddle's peak of his popularity was with uh, Rita Rand- Arcade Bro, right? Randy. And, yeah, unfortunately, that ended because of Randy's injury and mm-hmm. he's going to flounder. That's just the reality. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, I feel like the end game is that somehow Sami finally convinces Jay that he's being, you know, abused. Lah. Like, that, that, that's the whole storyline uh, that they're trying to pay off, right? That he mm-hmm. finally realizes that the family is like, you know, abusing him and they'll finally stand up for themselves. But it's almost as if, because now they're on separate shows, right? Sami Zayn mm-hmm. and Kevin Owens is now on Raw. He can't finish that story with mm-hmm. Jay. Jay yep. has to stand up for himself and that's why they're bringing in Solo into the group. They're making Solo more prominent, yep. almost like an extension of Roman's yep. fights against the Uso. So, I don't mind where the story is going, but I agree... The height of it was up to WrestleMania. Um, mm. They had a chance to tell a better story when Cody was the champion and then they talked about the fall of the, the bloodline. But now sure. I think they have to kind of accept that this is going to be a B storyline as opposed to the number one storyline in WWE right. now. Right. That's why at this point, I'm like, okay... Hopefully, they move on from, like like you said, they're splitting brands already, right? So, uh-huh. technically, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens are on both brands because they are the unified champions. Uh-huh. So, technically, uh-huh. they don't necessarily have to be done with them. But I think maybe what they're doing right now is shifting the focus to Solo and Jay and Jimmy because there was that moment, right, where, you know, um, I can't remember which Uso grabbed Solo from behind and then Solo turned around, he was going to do the spike. But he was like, yes. oh, no, bro, bro, it's me, bro, it's me, bro. So, it's so, Jay, Jay. Jay was Jay, right? So now they are sort of doing that whole like, okay, there's mistrust between the brothers. And you're right. Like, Solo is the extension. He's like the muscle. He's the arm of Roman Reigns. When Roman Reigns is not around, he's busy having a drink and taking it easy somewhere lah, as the undisputed champion. So are you quite as invested in Solo, Jay and Jimmy? Uh, should I am... we just remove and just let Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn stay away for a while because that one is overdone already and also by extension Matt Riddle because I think Matt Riddle feels like a third wheel here. He says they just inserted him there. Correct. I feel like with what has happened on Raw and if I can spoil it for you, sure. uh, they basically brought Kevin Owens and Sami to fight against Imperium, bro. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. It makes sense. You need new yep. challenges. Yeah. Yep, so like Marcel, Bartel, and Fabian, I don't know what what's all their names are. Ludwig Kaiser, all that all of them. Yeah. So they came early backstage and they were trying to herald the impending debut of Gunther. So Gunther is not there on Roy, I think he's coming next week. Okay. But then in the meantime they pick a fight with the tag team champion. So hmm. uh I I feel like that's where the direction is going. Yeah. Or, Gunther, or I yeah. hope it's not that Imperium, the two non Gunther guys, are just a bunch of choppers. <laughs> because they oh, yeah, I mean they would be sad lah. They will be lucky, like, huh? Yeah, it's a bit sad if that's the case. Like. But I would argue, right, that since Cody is going to be tied up with Brock for the foreseeable future, mm. since the World Heavyweight title is hopefully going to be in Seth Rollins' hands and it's going to be like exclusive to Raw, right now there's no feasible challenges for now, like, at least for this early part of the summer for Roman Reigns, right? Mm. I think this is a perfect time to pull the trigger on the Usos finally standing up to Solo, Jay finally having that one-on-one match with Roman. Mm -hmm. But I think Roman will eventually kind of like destroy Usos or somehow they 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 might he might just just win. But then the the bloodline completely disintegrate because of that. Because the Usos leave the family. Or they replace the Usos with the Tama Tonga and uh, Tangalua. What 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 the hell are they called? The gorilla. 
G-O-D. G-O-D. Gorillas of this. <laughs> that would be so dope, bro. I would like, you think we are over? I got more cousins. <laughs> <laughs> I got more Samoans to come uh, and join. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think that would be cool. I think that would be cool. But um, I heard about the rumors that they might be joining WWE. So I think that would be a pretty interesting development that would happen. Or, or they join and then like Bloodline really damn bloated already. They got every bloody Samoan from everywhere. Yeah. But, but the best part is, it's not like the NWO where any Tom Dick and Harry joined. It's literally yeah, yeah. just multiple cousins. they got too many cousins. Yeah. No, this is when you need to bring Joe back just to feud with them. <laughs> you oh, need okay, Joe, God. bro. The only uh, Samoan that's not an NOAE. I, I heard there's, there's a big uh, up-and-coming wrestler on the Indies also from the NOAE family. Uh-huh. Uh, Jacob Fatu from yes. MLW. Have you heard of his name? Yeah, I've heard of him. I've heard Jim Cornette talk about him before yeah jeep corner is really high on this guy so like yeah. hey man if there's so there's so many multiple people that they can introduce if they want to lah well this one like the whole family is yeah um jason says gunter busy doing his honeymoon oh congratulations to the uh ring janalal ah uh, yes i saw D- didn't you see on social media suddenly gunter doing some bangra dancing, dancing? <laughs> yeah he's uh he's the bedroom general now uh, hey, hey. He, he's <laughs> He's married to this NXT UK wrestler, but she retired already. Uh, Jeannie, do you do you oh, recognize her name? I have not seen her before. Okay, so NXT, she was quite big on progress, like in the British circuit, but mm-hmm. apparently she's like mixed Indian blood. So uh-huh. good for Gunther lah. They mixing the Austrian and Indian blood together. I don't know. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I, the bedroom is sacred, so. We shall not talk to you about Gunther. <laughs> um, wow. the, the Usos win makes sense furthers their storyline. It doesn't really matter at this point to Kevin and Sami Zayn if they win or lose, right? Uh, Matt Riddle. Unfortunately, Matt Riddle has slotted into that. Okay, he can take the pin. Bro. I kind of like that WWE is kind of moving away or like creating other stories beyond the bloodline. I think yes. that's only healthy for the business. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fias, it's good to see you, man. How you doing? Fias said he didn't want, he low-key didn't want the Bloodline story to end. Yeah, I think a lot of us wanted some sort of payoff, but we have to move on like, at this point. It is a bit played out, I feel, you know? Um, if yeah. anything, just, just give it some time to breathe. We can revisit it later. Okay, main event time. Are you ready? Yes, bro. Let's do it. Adrenaline! Cody Rhodes, Brock Lesnar... Um, so we had Cody Rhodes like out the blocks to start hot, which makes sense, right? They've been sort of building up to this, like, oh, you're going to beat me down. You cost me this, cost me that. Now I'm pissed off and he attacks Brock Lesnar right away. Yeah, uh, I like it. I like that he is playing into the peril. It created this sense of danger mm. straight immediately off the bat, right? <laughs> Have you seen the meme that has been walking around on social media though? Oh, the one where he's like, <laughs> Running, yeah, yeah, Cody Rhodes walking like an angry mother like that. Yeah, and then he like they they like green screen him and they put him on various backgrounds. Oh dear God, yeah. So the, uh, so I mean he's creating memories everywhere he goes like, but not in yeah. the way that he intended. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, freaking hell lah, these two, you know. Cody Rhodes, remember we used to hate on him in AEW. Here he he's home. He, he's in the main event. He deserves to be in the main event. He worked a great match with Brock Lesnar. None of it felt fake or bullshit or nonsense, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you, you had Brock with his dominating moments. And then, of course, the, uh, the, the big story, I guess, out of this entire match was that, that, that crimson mask, which we haven't seen in yes. WWE in a very long time, which yeah, made thought- it all the more shocking. I thought, I thought it was so cool. Um, the fact that, you know, I mean, because he's brought Lesnar, he can do whatever he wants, right? Mm. But I heard as well, I read up on some reports saying that this was planned. Like, yep. Brock planned to get himself bloody hard way. Yeah. He's, so, he's such a badass that he said, I'm not going to slice myself. I'm going to fucking smack my head against a sharp object and get myself bloody. <laughs> who? Okay, like, who in the right... Like, this is Brock Lesnar for you. He's like, you know, yeah, exactly. Who does... Color, but okay, I want to do it the hard way. I don't want to do the pussy way of cutting, but like, what the hell, bro? It's like, yeah, I just expose the turnbuckle. I'm going to wipe my head there again already. Like, what the hell? And bro, he's of a course, beast, bro. Yeah, he's a beast. Yeah, and who's going to say no, right? And thank God they didn't bring out the doctors to try to patch him up. Remember when uh, Finn Balor got that giant gash on his head? And of course, it's for safety. I understand, I get that. But it killed the momentum of the match, right? It did. It- if they did that here... I think Brock Lesnar would have killed the mar- uh, paramedics. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I think you you dare touch me, I'm going to smack your backside up the arena, bro. I, yeah, I know. yeah, I'll just suplex, take you to Suplex City, bro. So they just let the match go on and it was this bloody mess. I mean, the ending was a bit abrupt, but I guess that's the point, right? And this was the right result. You needed Cody to move ahead and you know Brock is going to disappear for a bit and then come back during Crown Jewel, you know? I mean, or Saudi Mania, you know, he needs the paycheck, right? Whatever. Yeah. But it gives him an out. Oh, you beat me on a, like a, a fluke win. You know, it wasn't a one, two, three. Like, it was a one, two, three, but you know what I mean. One thing I never liked about Brock's matches when he was the champion, right, was yeah. it was so predictable. It was just suplex, suplex, uh, yeah. throw people around, suplex. But I think it was because he was fighting the same or similar size guys who can't really give him that athletic match, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even with Bobby Lashley, like we thought like it's gonna be a dream match, but it wasn't really from a wrestling standpoint that enjoyable. But against Cody Rhodes, right, this match really reminded me of uh CM Punk versus Brock from Summer 2013. Mm. Uh of course CM Punk and Cody, I think kind of similar size. Yeah. And so they are very yeah. And they know how to tell a story. I at the end of the day, yeah. that's what it is. They know how to tell a story in the ring. Yes, yes. They know how to showcase the fact that they're in danger. I think yeah. that's one thing that is in most of Brock's matches, mm. you know he's a legit badass. You know this fucker can anytime, like, he angry or what, he probably yeah. can just break knock you. the shit. Yeah, yeah. Remember, yeah. remember that time he go break, uh, like, smack the shit out of Braun Strowman because he, like, yeah. too, played too hard with him or something yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, like, the fact that we know as an audience of what he's capable of, mm. The fact that he even sells for yeah. Cody Rhodes makes it a big deal. How has... Okay, I don't know at what point this happened. It's almost as if a switch got flicked, right? Maybe... I, th- I feel like it's... Uh, we saw the beginning of this during Cowboy Brock when he first came out and he was like freaking cutting promos, like hilarious yeah, yeah. promos. Yeah. But he's sort of become that guy that you can't tell whether he's real. I mean, he's doing it for real or not. Like he's mm. hit that perfect stride of like okay, we know this guy is a combat athlete he's legitimate but when he gets put in peril we still believe it like that that whole yeah. hit to the turnbuckle thing right it's like holy shit like i know that they don't do that like they blade in wrestling but that didn't seem like a blade you know like yeah yeah brock has ma- I, I i don't want to say mastered the art of pro wrestling but he's damn good at it and I don't think a lot of us think of Brock that way we think of Brock as oh monster comes in suplex 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 finish done game over right yeah, yeah. But people recent... think of him as a mercenary as well like, people yeah, think he yeah. doesn't love the business right no but in recent years to me looking at what Brock has done like damn he's given back to the business he's put over people that deserve to be put over and then the whole like don't want to work with Bray Wyatt thing like you know it, yeah, it kind of yeah. says a lot lah but you know like you can tell like his mind is actually very smart for the business or maybe he's just very smart for himself do you think right that he has slotted him into the Undertaker role in yes. the business yes yes right I, I think so he too. has become like even though they talk about it during the promos but I really feel that he's now the gatekeeper of WWE mm. oh Brock she- came back on Raw and Oh, okay, so challenge him to a rematch at Now Champions, which makes sense because it's Saudi Oh, uh, yes, he did. He, yeah, he yeah, wants, so, uh, he wants uh, the pay, as, he's going to the, the, the Saudi for the paycheck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I was saying just now earlier on in the episode, right? Like, he kind of spoiled Cody Rhodes' uh, triple track match mm. and makes caused sense. him better to win and mm. beat the shit out of him. And then he was like uh, cradling him on his tummy for some reason being very weird and like saying like, oh, you want me, to, you call me, calling me a coward? Who's the coward now? And then he challenged him to a fight. Bro, if you've ever watched like like some of Mike Tyson's old interviews and like, you mm. know, when he's really hyped and in the mood, right? You wonder what the heck is he on? Is he about to kiss him? Is he about to bite him? <laughs> like, you know, there's that sense of unpredictability and I think mm. Brock has tapped into that. That beast, oh, yeah, that yeah. inner beast right now that, you, that you're like, oh, like, I don't want to say anything that might offend him. He might bite my face. You I know? love his t-shirt now, bro. It's called uh, Country Ass Kicking. That's his Country. t-shirt. <laughs> Country as he wear the cowboy hat. Oh, yeah. perfect, bro. All of a sudden, this become a uh, Brock Lesnar love fest, but I mean, you got to give the man his props. You know, like I, I just, just seeing what he's done in the past couple of years. Yes, just see how he sells exactly. I, I mean, I go back to when he took that, um, that big Claymore kick from Drew. Remember the way mm. he flew out of the ring in the Royal Rumble? I was like, oh, wow, that's a thing of beauty. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. And I think the one thing, you, like you said, right, he chooses who he wants to work with, who chooses yeah. who he wants to put over. 
and I think he's working really, really hard to make Cody Rhodes the next John Cena, right? Like yes. the, the next top baby face. So that's why they are they have people might think this is like a side quest, but mm. I think this is a quest to make to test Cody, to make him even stronger so that he's ready for Roman Reigns again. Okay. Yes. And we've talked about this before. He should not be the first to win this Raw Championship. People mm. will start hating on him because people will start seeing him as, oh, they're just pushing him again. He's getting the John Cena push. Put him through peril. Make him go through this beast that is Brock Lesnar. Now, the question is, does he beat Brock Lesnar at Night of Champions? Because he already got his match. It was, quote-unquote, lucky win. You know, pins him mm. in the Kimura and all that kind of stuff. How do we play this out? And will there be a third match? Because, you know, let's say you have Brock win at Champ- uh, Night of Champions, right? Now you need a rubber mm-hmm. match. So you have a third match for Survivor Series, SummerSlam. I, I, I think they should have a, a third, for sure, right? A third match, yeah. Like, you yeah. need to have a decisive loss at Clash of Champions. Mm. And then they're like, okay, third match, or, or I'm out, right? At Money in the Bank. Right, right. And okay. then... And then Cody Rhodes win decisively at Money in the Bank. And when everyone least expects it, he enters the match. Money in the Bank match. Wow, so what? Cody with two matches on the night cannot la A bit much, right? No, no. Why, why not? Why not? Why not? They do a stipulation where whoever wins that last rubber match gets a spot. The final spot in sure. Money in the Bank. I think, sure. I think that would be a great out for him to insert himself back into Roman mm. Reigns' territory, right? Rishi says, I think we need 2-0 Cody. Brock can take the loss. I don't know about Brock can take the loss. I don't think it's good for his image for him to take a loss. Like, he can take a loss. Of course, it's Brock Lesnar, right? But, like, I don't think he should. I think it should be 1-1. Even in his most recent run as Cowboy Brock, the only time he lost was, wasn't it, like, both times it was Roman Reigns and both Mm. times it was Fluke, right? Mm -hmm. The crown jewel was the Fluke. Yeah, and then the summer slam was he basically got buried underneath the rubble like Thanos like that. So (laughs) yeah, no, exactly, exactly. Yeah, uh, and I feel like Cody, since he really lost that one that Roman Reigns with Mm. against Roman Reigns, I think he can afford the loss more than Brock Lesnar at at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, there you go. That's your um backlash pay per view. Okay, it's time. For letter grades and number grades, everybody. Jump into chat. Upon 10, or you want to give A, B, C, D, E, up to you. But mm-hmm. for me, the matches itself, like as a pay-per-view or a PLE, as a match card, I already give it like a solid 8. And then you add that ridiculous crowd. Bro, this is up there, bro. I'm I'm thinking 9.5. Ooh. Okay, that's cool. I You know what's funny? What? I feel... Like, I enjoyed Backlash as, like, a watch through, like, one-time watch through more than WrestleMania. Yes. Yes. Agree. I mean, of course, of course, the results do play a factor. Like, the fact that, you know, Cody lost, yeah, that yeah. affected my enjoyment of WrestleMania. But as, like, a sit-down, three hours, like, from start to finish, I was invested. The crowd yeah. made it felt like one night mm. stand in ECW. It didn't feel tiring, right? Yes, correct. And also, very interestingly, apparently it was the highest grossing backlash, most viewed backlash of all time, like the best performing backlash. Uh, and I wouldn't disagree, even though the matches are... I mean, we've had backlashes where it was The Rock versus yeah. Triple H in an Iron Man match kind of shit, but for some reason, I just felt like this was like a moment in time. Like when mm. WrestleMania was a missed opportunity, this yeah. felt like the stars aligned, everything that had to be perfect was perfect. It was just really good booking. And even if the booking was shady in certain places, like Seth versus Omas, you had the talent in there to make up for it. Yep. Um, and it's, it was a very lean card, right? It wasn't... Yep. It didn't overstay its welcome. I think it had yep. less than eight matches or six matches. Yep. I mean, the, I would, lo- bro, yeah. the longest match was 25 minutes. I'm looking at it right now. It's Bad Bunny and Damien Priest, but that's because of all the Kalito and Savio Vega and all that bullshit. Yeah. I would give this a solid... I would say an A, and I would give it a 8.5. 8.5, 8. 8. 5. okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, for what it was, I that's why I give it a 9.5. It's like damn near perfect, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. For what it was, la. For, for what, what it was, was. la. Like, you know, there was no main event championship match, so it was a bit like, you know, that's why it stops it from being a 10. I feel like if you want a 10, like, yeah, you got to have Roman Reigns, you got to have the champion there, and it has to be a championship match, right? Can you say, bro, mm. this year, right, in PLE, right? Yeah. WWE has knocked it off the park for yeah. each one of their PLEs. It's Royal almost... Rumble. Yeah. Bro, it's almost as if 
the guy who was booking NXT black and gold is booking WWE <laughs> right now. It's almost <laughs> as if, huh? Almost, uh, bro. Not Omas, but oh, almost. <laughs> Uh, look, if, if Vince really was hands off with this, uh, then Vince needs to be hands off more. Let's just put it that way, okay? Think about it. Ro- uh, Roy Rumble knocked it out of the park. Mm. Elimination Chamber with the whole Sami Zayn story, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. WrestleMania, yeah. for what it was worth, like it was a spectacle, right? No matter yeah, yeah. the result. And now Backlash. Backlash is the one I at least expect it to do well. Yeah. Suddenly become like a hot, you know? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is this going to be a problem? We're going into Saudi Mania, right? We're going into Night of Champions. Are expectations yeah. way too high now? No, I wouldn't say they're too high, but the excitement is high. Like, right. Because there's things to look forward to. We have the World Heavyweight Championship Tournament. Mm. We have Cody Brock 2. Yep. And now Roman Reigns is really going to return soon. So there's going to be some story involved with Roman Reigns, mm. Solo Sikoa, the Usos. So that's yep. going to be a you know, a long-running story that's going to you know, finish up as well. So I think there's going to be a lot, a lot of interesting plot points lah. So, through. okay, so to sort of wrap things up, right, heading into Night of Champions, now you have this World Championship tournament that yes. involves SmackDown superstars, which I know some people have complained in the Discord, say, huh, why, why are SmackDown guys involved in the Raw Championship? Yeah. I guess it's an opportunity to showcase everybody. And if, let's say, the winner were to be somebody from SmackDown, just pull, pull them to Raw, lah, right? Yeah, uh, and also I saw the brackets. Yeah. Um, the... Okay, the I'm, raw ones are predictable. Yeah, you can put yeah. it out if you want. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. So Damien Priest, Seth uh, Rollins, and Shinsuke. Um, so Seth wins, right? Yes. Uh, Seth moves on. Finn Balor moves on from his. It was Finn, Cody, Miz. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Actually, you could have gone either way with Cody or Finn. But, you know, they wanted to do Cody, Brock. So that makes sense. Seth versus Finn, right? In a rematch of their Universal title. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Wait, but of course, at the end of Raw, that was mm. the main event. So Seth and Finn had a banger of a match. Right. Uh, and Finn kind of got, you no, know, so Seth kind of got his revenge lah on Finn because you know they they recreated the spot by the way, the one mm. where they buckle bomb into the barricade. Right, right, right. But this time it was Finn buckle bombing Seth ah. on the. Nice okay, little yeah. uh, long term storytelling, huh? So okay, yeah. we got Seth Rollins at the Night of Champions finals versus okay, so this is the other bracket: AJ Styles, Edge, and Mysterio. Oh, interesting, like old, old friends, Smack- huh? Bro, SmackDown very unpredictable, bro. The brackets. Yeah. Uh, the other side is Austin Theory, Bobby Lashley again, <laughs> and Shamus. Mm. Wait, why is Drew not involved in any anything? Poor Drew. Why? Oh, he's still injured, ah. Uh? He's still injured or he might still be having issues with WWE in terms of uh, contract. No shag. idea. La. Okay, okay. So, who do you think is moving forward on the SmackDown side to face Seth Rollins? In, I would say Austin Theory might move to the finals. Yeah. As Just US champion? Yeah. yeah, as US champion. I do not know why, but he probably would. But it uh, feels a bit predictable, you know, if he... Unless he drops the US title at some point, but it's like, unless they are trying to redo the whole... Remember Seth was the champ champ at one point? He was world champion and US champion at the same time? So could they be doing the same thing for Austin Theory? Well, if it was up to me, I would love Bobby Lashley because I think Bobby Lashley mm. with the world heavyweight title on his on him like would look Ooh. amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, I just feel like WWE is going to push Austin Theory or give him more shine. I don't know yeah. why. I mean, uh, it, it doesn't it suck that we immediately have written off Sheamus? <laughs> like, we're not even bringing <laughs> Sheamus up as a potential, you know? Poor fella la, but it's okay. La. Fella got the brawling brutes to play around with. What about the other triple threat match, bro? Like, Edge, is Edge due for one last world title <laughs> run? Bro? See, I look at the other side, I go... Hey, all the old fellas <laughs> got AJ style Edge and Rey Mysterio. It doesn't matter who wins. It feels like the younger fellas should win. Or like I don't know, man. It looks it's such a weird bracket on the other side. Like AJ Styles I, is kind of sorry. I, what I like. I sorry. I was just saying I like AJ Styles. The top AJ Styles is world heavyweight champion, though. Okay, so like what AJ Styles with the help of the Good Brothers and Mia Yim, or I don't know. I I I feel like he's come back very cold. And if they wanted to bring him back and put him in World Heavyweight Championship contention, they would have brought him back in a big way. But no, he just showed up at the draft. Oh, I'm back. Hello. We got drafted. So I feel okay, like they don't have any plans for AJ Styles. In that, it, within those three competitors, AJ, H, and Ray Mysterio, who you want to go through? 
who would I want? I would want AJ Styles, but I feel like Edge yeah. is going to go through. Like, it, there's a difference mm. between what I want and what I think they'll do. Mm, oh, very interesting. What if Edge and Austin Theory mm. and that in the finals, I think Edge... Edge and Seth. Mm. Wait, Edge and Seth again? Nah, I don't want Edge and Seth. I'll, maybe Austin Theory wins against Edge, but like by cheating. And okay. then Austin goes to the finals with with uh, Seth, but then Edge comes and like, kind Trip- of like... Stir Tri- shit with Austin. Triple threat lah. And then make it a triple threat lah. No, no, like as in he caused Seb, uh, Austin the victory and then Seb wins, right? Uh. And then Edge and Austin can have this feud because I remember very clearly uh. Edge got said that he wants to work with Austin Theory before. Okay, okay. So it's quite obvious that Seb is going to win lah. Yeah, but but I don't mind because I think he deserves it. All everyone True. and their mother wants him to be the world heavyweight champion. True, and we all know that Seb is a Paul guy. Levesque loves yeah. Seth. So, yeah, yes. it makes sense, right? And yeah. then, of course, moving ahead, you could have Seth feud with whoever else, Brock, Cody, da da da. It makes sense. Yeah, sure. I'll go with that. Mm-hmm. Even though, like, I was kind of hoping Drew would be involved somehow. You know? Like, I like, yeah, I like the thought of Drew becoming World Heavyweight Champion as well. Like, throw in someone, like, I, I really dislike AJ Styles Edge Rey Mysterio, that match. Like, mm-hmm. everyone there has been a champion, and everyone there is, like, you know, Way too overpowered for this already. Does it make yeah. sense? Yeah, I get it. I mean, if they wanted to throw a few curveballs, mm. imagine if they put like... <laughs> and this is a pipe dream. Imagine if LA Knight was in this tournament. Oh, Ooh. right. Put LA Knight in at least one of the brackets to make it interesting. Kill, uh, killer yeah. Cross. Uh, Carrion yeah. Cross, maybe. I know he's been garbage <laughs> recently, but put him in there. Make him content. You know, at least give him some sort of a shine. They're like, nope, just give it to all the... Um, uh, the the old faithfuls, the the, yeah. the guys we know can draw. And very funny enough, we don't have Sammy and uh, Kevin and so on in this tournament, mm. meaning that they really are out of the world title picture, which is kind of sad. Yeah, but you know, I mean, they have they have titles, they have double titles. They, so yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and last last scenario, a lot mm. of people have wanted actually, right? Jay Uso as like a random oh. uh pick inside this tournament because if he were to win or go to the final. More distance with the bloodline because somebody correct. else is going for the title, right? Correct, correct. I think, but yeah. that that pipe dream is gone. The whole like, oh, J main event, Jey Uso, like that, that's not gonna happen anymore. He's fully entrenched in his tag team, and they're just gonna move forward with them as a tag team. Unfortunately, yes, lah. But um, I don't know. Overall, Seth winning is great, but like, does that ruin the enjoyment for you? So no, I mean. Seth has been very entertaining in the past couple of years. He's been that good hand, you know, and they put him in feuds to make people look better. I think he is due a win. But at the same time, I also think Drew is due a win. And maybe Seth wins, and guess who comes out to beat him down on Raw? Drew. A heel Drew. Yeah, that would be dope. And then you can have your first feud, Seth versus Drew, which is... Have they feuded before? I feel like that would be very fresh. They've only feuded as part of the Shield when oh. Seth and Dean fought against Drew and Dolph Ziggler, remember? I, re- I remember this. So yeah, there you go. You could have like Nick's leveled up <laughs> Seth versus leveled up um, Drew. And then Fias says, Seth wins that Omar's coming. <laughs> hey, stop it, la, bro. That's a terrible idea. Oh my god, I was just about to say like, what if the first contender is Omar's? La. No, oh, bro. He, he already defeated Omas quite soundly, stomped him from the heavens, and that's it. No more. Go away. Omas, take a break. You know, bro, Vince McMahon. If he was Vince McMahon booking, I want to make Omas. Uh, no, a no. Full title contender. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> no, Von Wagner, bro. Better. Von <laughs> oh, Wagner. He's a free bro, agent, isn't he? Of all the NXT exports, come on, like, let Braun Breaker. Like, that's the most realistic one. Like, uh, we talked about this last week. Braun Breaker, give him one year to play heel. He already got to practice playing face. Now he got one year to practice heel. He can come in next year. Give him time. He's still damn young. So much potential. I love it. Uh, yeah, but uh, overall, I think Backlash, show, Backlash was great. I mean, SmackDown set the tone, right? Mm. Uh, Puerto Rico car was amazing. And then today on Raw, we kind of kind of saw what's yep. next, right? Going into Saudi Mania, Clash yep. of Champions or Night of Champions. Mm. With the World Heavyweight Title Tournament, Cody Brock 2. Very interesting couple of weeks. I think I think we're going back into the momentum of... Uh, having things happen, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> and, okay, isn't the next pay-per-view, like, you know, um, the, 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 the Night of Champions, isn't it the same or similar weekend as AEW? Or am I wrong? 
I believe it might be, you know. Double yeah, okay. or nothing. Yeah. 22, right? The, double or nothing is 28th of May, night of Oh, Chang- no. Hang, yeah. hang on. Uh, night of 27. Been... Yeah, it's the same weekend, bro. Oh, no. That's head so to head. Actually, no. Night of Champions comes first. And, well, I mean, as it stands, it looks like the better card. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Bro, think about this, bro. Mm. Next week, we, we will probably have to start previewing like Grapple Max and SPW. And then the week after that, we probably have to <laughs> preview Double or Nothing and Night of Champions. Oh, my, me is going to be packed, bro. Absolutely. Hey, funnily enough, right? You had like a uh, uh, championship tournament before. And then, I mean, in, in WWE, AEW also got championship tournament. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. Four, the four pillars tournament, which ultimately they shat on their own tournament. Not to it go back. Fast, let's, yeah, let's they did the fun. whole tournament. Oh, but now it's going to be a four-way. Like what? Then the tournament for fuck. Bro, it's not just double or nothing. Wait, it's not just double or nothing and AEW, right? Uh. There's also another tournament outside for Grapple Max as well. Bro. <laughs> huh? Te- Out- technically, technically, their settled outside is a combination of a tournament to crown <laughs> who's the next number one contender, hey, right? Hey, May, is a, uh, May is a freaking, what? Tournament month, is it? Yeah, shit. Okay, okay. I just realized the timeline, bro. Say, for example, uh, this week is like 10th, right? Mm. Next week, we have to preview Set Outside because it's on the 20th. Yeah. Right? It's, if if I'm not wrong, isn't SPW Relentless that same weekend as well? Correct me if I'm wrong, bro. Uh, I can I'm check it check. out right now. Yeah, I'm checking it right now as well. Oh, no. It's actually on... Hey, Alama. Ah. It's on the... 26, bro. So is the week <laughs> is the weekend of the, the two show. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll have to figure this out. It's just it's just a lot of wrestling all at once. So you got Grapple Max on the twentieth, and then the next weekend is SPW Night of Champions and AEW. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Get out, bro. Get out. Get out. I don't have brother out. Have a brother out, bro. I don't have that much uh, capacity in my mind for that much wrestling, bro. Uh, okay, well, anyway, so next week, most probably, we might be previewing Grapple Max. We will be, uh, yes, absolutely. We, we, will see who, we will see who wants to come and promote uh, the show for us on the pod next week. And then, the week after, we'll probably review the show and preview SPW, Grapple Max, you know, SPW, Double or Nothing, uh, Night of Champions. Oh my god, just, my brain explodes. Yeah. Me, bro. Uh, you know what? Just just check out our Discord. We'll update you on all things there on our Instagram account as well. Links all in the description. Of course, if you like what we do, uh, drop by our Patreon page. And if you like to pledge, hey, we appreciate it. However much is comfortable for you. Thank you very much for the support uh, of the podcast. Okay. Um, it's time for us to get out of here. Let's go enjoy the rest of our day. Everybody in chat, thank you for being here. We appreciate each and every one of you. Let's shout out some of our patrons right now as well. Uh, the Shadow, Doc, Rishi, uh, the, the scroller very slow. Uh. I'm waiting for the thing to scroll. <laughs> Irvin, I'm trying to Div. go from memory. Div Royalty, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, Saleh uh, as well. Saleh, our dude, Saleh. Yeah, and everyone here as well. Uh, Rishi, Zayden, uh Fias, Jason, all of you, thanks so much for joining our review of uh, our, I wasn't say our review of Brock Lesnar, but no, our review of Backlash, right? Well, we basically, you know, made this a Brock Lesnar love fest as well, so it might as well be a review of Brock Lesnar too. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be an interesting summer for wrestling fans and uh, let's hope, you know, the momentum goes, keeps getting awesome, more, much more awesome and we'll have more shows and more great things to talk about and more content for you guys as well. Bro, June is going to be crazy too as a gamer because you got Diablo 4 coming out, you got Ooh. Street Fighter 6 coming out, uh, AEW Fight Forever. Who knows? Maybe it will come out, maybe <laughs> don't know. So <laughs> that one, that one still question mark, but you know, at KMB, some point KMB. it'll come out. Can we can we do a comparison, bro? I mean, I don't know whether we're allowed to do that, but once we review your, uh, if Fight Forever ever comes, we review that, and then we do a comparison between Two K. And <laughs> okay, Fight I think the thing is, it's two totally different games. One to me looks like a party game. The other one looks like a full-on wrestling sim. You know. So, Very interesting you mentioned it like that because th- what didn't people call AEW matches party matches? Yeah. So yeah, it, it fits with the brand. If that makes sense. So, okay. Like, when you have friends over, right? 
you are less likely to set up like a whole WWE 2K tournament thing. Like, wow, they want to be troublesome. No, you are more likely to go and set up like a uh, just press, press, punch, 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 kick, punch, kick. Sort of a yeah, thing, like yeah. a Smash Bros, right? That's why Smash Bros is yeah. such a popular franchise. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think at the end of the day, um, we might try to enjoy it, but we shall see the reviews first. We might, bro, bro, we, we, we will enjoy it for what it is. Let's yes, just put it yeah. that way, okay? Uh, and that said, all right, please enjoy the rest of your day, people, here on this Tuesday. Foreign, my brother, it's always a pleasure. As always, it's Mr. Young. And it's Foreign in the building. Enjoy your week. Oh, God. Let me see you,